In this video, I'm going to show beginners the fun and excitement they can have by shooting in shutter priority mode. In an earlier video, we covered aperture priority mode. That's where you get all your pretty pictures, your scenery, your portraits. In shutter mode, this is where you're going to get all your cool and exciting pictures. Shutter speed is not just about getting the correct exposure. In the digital photography age, the art of shutter speed seems to have been forgotten, except for waterfalls, which we'll cover later. Shutter speed is not a Photoshop trick. Any photographer can do this, even with old entry-level equipment. So what can shutter speed do? You notice in these examples there's a fast shutter speed, a middle shutter speed, and a slow shutter speed. So let's get your camera set up for shutter priority mode. On your mode dial on the top of the camera, look for S for most brands. If you have a Canon camera, it's going to say TV. This stands for time value. Once you're in shutter mode, you should see these values on your camera. These are your shutter speeds. But if you play with your command dial, you'll see there's a lot of shutter speeds. So let's change your camera to the fastest shutter speed it can go. For most cameras, that's one four thousandth of a second. So just spin your command dial until you see the fractions change. Some cameras can go to one eight thousand. Some it's only one two thousand. These are very fast shutter speeds. These are what you want to use when you want to freeze the action. If you're shooting a sporting event or children moving fast, you might want to try a fast shutter speed. However, just be aware of this. If you try shooting one four thousandth of a second indoors, it may not expose correctly. That's a really fast shutter speed, usually meant for either outdoors or where there's bright lights. If you're in a modern gymnasium or a hockey rink, you should easily be able to shoot one one thousandth of a second or one two thousandth of a second. Generally speaking, Anything approximately one five hundredth of a second or faster freezes action. All you have to do is find the fastest shutter speed you can use for the lighting you have. In this example, the sun already went down, so the fastest I can shoot was one five hundredth of a second. When I tried to shoot one one thousandth of a second, it was too dark. Because the shutter is only open half the time, it cuts half the light. If you've ever used a sports mode on your camera, is what your camera is doing is shooting very fast shutter speeds. But you can do it yourself by shooting in shutter mode and choosing a fast shutter speed. Fast shutter speeds may not seem that exciting, but it is very important to learn in case you don't want any motion in your pictures. Which leads to the next point, middle shutter speeds. Sometimes you purposely want a modest amount of motion in your pictures. A middle shutter speed is generally anywhere from about one thirtieth of a second up to one two hundredth of a second. These are still shutter speeds that most people can handheld, but you will have to hold your camera very tight. When you photograph something that's moving and you have a little bit of motion in it, it's more appealing to the eye. If you shoot a quick moving car with a fast shutter speed, it looks like the car is just parked there. If you use a middle shutter speed, you may notice there's a modest amount of motion. Here in Shaunavan, Saskatchewan, for fun, sometimes we have tractor races. You notice in this picture shot with a fast shutter speed, it froze the action. The tire has no motion. By switching the camera to a middle shutter speed, in this case, 1 60th of a second. Not every photo needs to be tack sharp perfect. Having a little bit of chaos and motion in it adds a lot of value. And because very few people do it, you'll notice that your pictures may stand out. So if you see one of those big turbines, a car moving, or even someone running, try a middle shutter speed. You notice in this picture how far a car can travel at 1 30th of a second? This is an exaggerated version of what I'm talking about. We don't have a lot of things that move that fast here in southwest Saskatchewan, but any folks who live in the city have lots of options. 
This takes a little bit of time to get a handle on, but once you do get a handle on it, your pictures will look better. Another advantage with middle shutter speeds is capturing what I call chaotic moments. That's usually when it's dark and there's a lot of people moving around. For example, this is a concert we had here in town. Since I don't have a $3,000 lens to do professional concert photography, I simply put my camera in shutter mode, left it at 1 80th of a second, and kept shooting. Half the pictures were horrible. But I got a lot of really cool pictures out of this just by shooting shutter mode. If you were here with me trying to get this picture when you're shooting in auto mode, your camera would have difficulty focusing. It would be trying to go in and out, in and out, trying to lock a focus. And then when it did take a picture, the flash would probably have popped up. To capture chaotic moments, all you need to know is single point focusing, which I cover in a different video, and how to put your camera at about 1 80th of a second. Once you quickly lock into a focus, you hit your shutter button. I also use a middle shutter speed and single point focusing when I'm doing urban street photography without a tripod. When you watch a motion picture in a movie theater, each frame is shot at 1 50th of a second. And of course, there's 24 frames a second. The reason why they choose 1 50th of a second, it's the most pleasing amount of motion to the human eye. The default middle shutter speed should be 1 25th of a second. So always put your camera back to this shutter speed when you're finished with shutter mode. And number three, slow shutter speeds. In the digital photography age, the only time people really use slow shutter speed in shutter mode is to shoot waterfalls. These require a tripod. Anything slower than 1 30th of a second becomes too difficult for most humans to handheld. So let's put our camera to 1 second. When you spin your command dial, you notice those fractions will get smaller and smaller and smaller. There's 1 50th, 1 10th, 1 4th. Once you start seeing inches symbols, that means seconds. Here's 4 tenths of a second. 8 tenths. Now 1 inch means 1 full second. So when you press your shutter button, it's going to take a picture for 1 second. Most cameras go up to 30 seconds. You can't use slow shutter speeds when there's a lot of light in your room or outside. This is meant for when it gets darker. Otherwise, it'll overexpose your image. So now that you got your camera set to 1 inch, Let's pretend we were both going to a waterfall right now. You'd set up your camera on a tripod, put it in shutter mode at one inch, and then take a one second exposure. You see all the motion in the waterfall? Here's what a waterfall picture looks when you shoot a fast shutter speed versus slow. And of course, to shoot a waterfall during the day, you can't have direct sunlight. It's either got to be very cloudy or at the end of the day. But it's not just waterfalls. Your cameras go up to 30 seconds. So in this abandoned two-story hotel in Saskatchewan, it's pitch dark. So I set my camera to 30 seconds. Once I did that, I'm walking around this room with a flashlight illuminating things. I'm in this exposure the entire time. But you can see I lit that chair, the TV. Oh, you can see where I accidentally lit my foot. You can even do this on objects around your house. Here's a 10-second exposure. You can even go downtown and take pictures using slow shutter speeds. In fact, I made an entire video on urban low light long exposures. It's a lot of fun. I've even done five second exposures of my friends for Halloween pictures. You notice how she's moving for most of the exposure, then she stops at the end? Kids love slow shutter speed ideas because slow shutter speeds provoke a creative instinct in people. I even made an entire video about painting with light. When you do slow shutter speeds with a flashlight, you can do some really cool things, including food photography. While you're learning shutter mode, I highly recommend as a beginner that you use auto ISO. Most cameras have an ISO button, just make sure it says auto. Then once you get a handle on shutter mode, you can play with ISO settings later. Here's another great benefit about learning shutter mode. Once you've learned, aperture mode by itself, then you learn shutter mode by itself, it'll then become more natural to shoot in manual mode one day because you'll understand each mode independently. 
If you have any questions or comments about this video, please leave it in the comment section below and I will respond. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoy Shutter Priority Mode.